Good morning, everybody. How are we doing? Are we well? Oh, my goodness, that doesn't sound very good. Are we well? There we go. Cool. Listen, a very warm welcome to YMS 24, crikey, NYC. Um, my name's Richard Jackson, and I'm head of events and insight here at Pion. And we are so proud today to showcase our new brand to the youth marketing community and welcome you all back for what is a phenomenal ninth year here in New York City. Um, here at Pion, we enable brands to better connect with their audience. And in this case, it's Gen Z. And we have a very passionate, driven team that live and breathe youth culture. And that enables us here to host this event with the authority in the youth marketing space. And I'm so proud and privileged to present a full two-day program to you all today. Now, before we kick off with what I think is 60 speakers, uh, hundreds of minutes of content, we've got a few bits of housekeeping to get through, so do please bear with me. First off, the app. In your app, you will have the agenda, a handshake function, you can create your own diary, there will be a um, treasure hunt kicking off later, there will be a social feed to share your comments, so do please download the app, get involved, and um, share your thoughts on today's event. Where we're at right now is the discover stage. What's the stage called? This one, we're getting really good. The discover stage. Through the other side of the space is the evolve stage. What's the stage called? Listen, we're getting there. Awesome. We have two master classes, one today at 2 o'clock by Off Screen Media, and one tomorrow at, I believe, 11 o'clock by our friends at Arch Rival. If you've not yet booked a place, do please book your spot. Now, whenever you, you still with me? Yeah. Yes. Whenever you hear this song, there we go. That is your cue to drop your coffee and come back to whatever stage you're wanting to uh, learn from. And I believe that song is called Rush by Troy Sivan, so my colleagues tell me it's very popular. Now, if you've got any questions about your time at YMS, do please see anybody in a YMS pie on shirt, and they will be able to help you. Um, and finally, a big thank you to all our event partners and our attendees. Without anybody here in this room, this event would not be possible. And everybody here at Pion um, is hugely grateful for the support you've given us across the past nine years. Right, it's enough from me. We wanna hear from you. Now, everyone here has come to better understand young people today. Now, there might be another, a number of other reasons around that, but inherently we're all here because we have some interest in understanding our future consumers. However, I am sure there's maybe some other reasons around that. So what I want to do is spend two minutes with you all talking to the person on your left or on your right about why are you here today? What do you want to get out of it? Is it content-led? Is it networking? Did you want to down at the office? A number of reasons. We'll spend just 60 seconds having a quick chat with each other, get the, uh, get the knowledge sharing going. So, um, and we'll come back in a minute and hopefully we'll hear some... Uh, great sentiment. So off we go with one minute of a quick discussion. Oh, no. Yeah. S yes. Yeah. Okie doke. Let's, uh, let's bring it back to the, uh, to the room. Crikey. Um, I was very excited. Okay, cool. So, let's, let's regroup. 
Okie doke. So five, four, three, two, one. Okie doke. Right, is everybody ready? Are we ready? Yes. There we go. So this is, this is the awkward bit. Who, oh my goodness. Okie doke, let's, uh, let's bring it back and uh, close up those conversations. Awesome. Uh, so who in the room um, would like to uh, share um, an anecdote as to why they're here today? Anybody want to be bold enough to break the ice? This gentleman at the front, so where are you from? I live in Barcelona. Barcelona, cool. Do you want to share, uh, stand up by all means and... Cool. And the reason you're here today? Oh, I'm here to meet Brad. Yeah, okay. So, so networking. There we go. Any, any other, anybody else want to be brave enough to maybe showcase a reason as to why they're here? Uh, somebody at the back. Yes. Okay. So someone really honest because their team sent them. There we go. Um, we've got time for one more. There we go. Yes, sir. Fantastic, thank you so much, sir. And people at the back, there's lots of space at the front. So, oh, one more, yes, sir. Uh, yes, we came, uh, from, from Switzerland. Big round of applause for our attendees from Switzerland. Fantastic, so here to talk social media. Yes. Lovely, excellent, well, listen, a, a warm welcome. So everyone here has got a number of reasons why we're here. But collectively, we are here united to have a better understanding of how we can support young people today in our products, in our businesses, and in their future. Now, to kick off the event, we're going to hear from one of Pion's in-house poets called Savon about what it means to be a Gen Z today. Welcome to the era of change makers, of risk takers the first ever digital natives, the era where the internet is a bottomless ocean. We sail our imaginations across until we find a good place to swim, where diversity is a folded paper. We slide from underneath our portfolio that says, do you like me? Check yes or no. This is the era of work with, not work for. Financial literacy is a class you can take from the comfort of your own TikTok. Depression is a sleeping giant we tap at the bottom of photos. We name the elephant in the room lonely because they both weigh the same. Shopping online is the new playing outside, and sustainability is the password to my online banking. Political views are pickup lines we use to fall in love. This is a generation of game players, of app makers, the no-nonsense takers. This is the era of a time we have never seen. This is the time for Generation Z. A generation of game players and app makers. And with that, it's a great pleasure to welcome my colleague Alex to the stage as we discuss our latest Youth Trends 2024 report. Alex, let's give a big round of applause. Good morning, everyone. I have a confession to make. Um, I was the one who told Rick that Rush would be a cool song to use. This is why you need Gen Z on your team, right? Exactly. Um, how are we all doing? Amazing energy in the room. Like, lovely to see you guys all chatting away to each other. Um, it's my third, third YMS now, second time out in New York. Um, and I am absolutely buzzing to be on stage with Rick today to share the results of our 2024 Youth Trends Report, which is a labor of love. It is my baby, and we've got some incredible trends this year to run you through. Um, but before we get stuck into it, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hand over to my right-hand man of the morning, who's going to do a bit of, um, of scene setting about the current cool. climate of Gen Z. So our latest Trends Report has identified, of course, what does it mean to be Gen Z today? Well, Gen Z are facing unique issues that nobody here in this room potentially would have grown up even worrying about as they come of age. Kicking things off the climate crisis. This is a reoccurring theme in the majority of our reports. The climate crisis, first and foremost, an issue for young people today. A cost of living crisis. We then move on to a new 
a new, uh, a new issue that's arisen in this year's report that was nowhere to be seen last year, global conflict, a generation growing up surrounded by global conflict. And finally, health anxiety, both mental wellness and physical health anxiety. Just some issues facing today's Gen Z day in and day out. So we looked at the issues to kick off today's event, but what causes are important to Gen Z, according to our latest report um, in 2024? Well, first and foremost, it's activism, with our Youth Trends report stating 94% of young people today would describe themselves as an activist, headstrong, know what they want and know what they want to see from the world around them. 85% of young people today would like to see more diverse representation in marketing. Every single person here in this room today has a part to play in getting that number down by this time next year, for sure. Financial security, a worrying 97% of young people are struggling with the cost of living crisis more than people think they are doing. So almost 100% of our panelists are struggling with the cost of living crisis. Okay, let's bring it back. A lot of big stats there, but it's not all negative. Despite no. this, Gen Z remain positive. They are the go-getters of the future. They are ambitious. 46% of them have high standards for themselves. Importantly, they're not being too hard on themselves. 75% say that they are at peace with who they are. They're acutely aware of things like their mental health, and they're not passive when it comes to protecting it. 57% shared with us that they want to improve their mental health this year. So, now that we've got a bit of a grasp on who Gen Z are in 2024 and what unique issues they're facing as they come of age, let's have a look at some of the trends that are impacting their lives. So this is your sneak peek into the 2024 data. Um, the full report will land in June, so anyone joining us over at YMS London, look out for your hard copy. Um, but yeah, let's kick off. I think Rick's going to run us through. Awesome. So we have six trends in the report, and we're going to be uh, covering four today. AI, two letters you'll be hearing a lot about, I'm sure, over the, the next couple of days. But first, we'll discuss the AI debacle. We'll then move on to travel and the experience economy. Young people wanting to get out into the world and experience all that life has to offer. When times are tough, the youth get nostalgic. How looking back to the past is making young people today, thankfully, feel happy. And finally, gen activists and the cancel culture debate. Okay, let's talk about AI. I'm sure this is going to be a huge theme throughout this conference. I know that we've got a couple of sessions tailored just on this. Um, and rightly so, it feels inescapable in 2024. Um, but it's nothing new. AI has been around for decades. But the generative differences that generative AI has hit the mainstream this year, you're familiar with it because it's everywhere. Um, we took this to our panel. So we asked 2,000 Gen Zers in the US what they thought the biggest trend of 2024 would be, and we've kind of given it away by the previous slide, but yes, overwhelmingly, the majority was AI. That's what the majority said. But there's a lot of fear-mongering around AI, so it kind of leads to this debate, anxiety versus efficiency, the AI debacle, which is such a great word. Should Gen Z be anxious, or should they be confident? Should they be worried about their future, or should they be excited to enhance it? First thing to note is that Gen Z are the most technologically driven generation yet. They've never really known a world without it. As a result, they're not living in the world of AI, they are actively shaping it. They're also growing up and they're entering the world of work. Is this fear-mongering having an effect on them? Well, maybe when it comes to creative processes, perhaps 40% of Gen Z say that AI is a threat to creativity. They also think it might be making us a little bit more antisocial. 34% say that AI is a threat to human connections. Um, however, they're harnessing it, and when they're getting into the world of work, they're already using it as a productivity tool. 21% of Gen Z are using AI to secure their future jobs, which is very entrepreneurial of them. Um, and to give you a little break from me talking, let's see it in action. Let me show you the easiest way to create a professional resume in less than 30 seconds. First, head to Kick Resume, and then under Resumes, you want to click New Resume with AI. And then type in your name and job title, and in just a few seconds, it generates you a live resume which you can edit. You can choose from tons of different design templates, and then either write or rewrite your entire resume with AI. Then use the resume analysis to grade your resume. Mine got 84, so yep, this is ready to go. Nice, a very efficient use of AI for a pretty tedious thing to do. Um, I love that. Um, so what does this mean for you as marketers? Well, Gen Z are obviously seeing change as an opportunity, not a threat. You should be doing the same. 
Um, so let's go into a couple of case studies for brands that are harnessing the power of AI in three really crucial ways um, and how they're reaching Gen Z in doing so. Personalization from Spotify. I believe we have Spotify in the room somewhere. Um, Spotify is a brand that is absolutely killing it in this space. Um, and when it comes to music, it's a very passive hobby, but sometimes you just don't know what you're in the mood to listen to. Um, and Spotify recognizes this, and it allows you to streamline your music in a personalized way. So you get personalized playlists, um, the wildly anticipated Spotify Wrapped event, and recently, AI DJ. And I don't know if anyone has used it, but this is an amazing tool. It basically chooses a stream of songs that it thinks you'll enjoy, and it gives you like a DJ voice commentary throughout it. Um, so it is a godsend for when you're feeling indecisive and you want some of the heavy lifting done for you. Co-creation. Does anyone recognize this trend? Yeah? Anyone use this trend? Amazing. Um, so this was all over my For You page last year. It was inescapable. It is the AI yearbook trend. Um, and this obviously comes from everyone's favorite social media brand, which is TikTok, who I also think we have in the room somewhere today. Um, so TikTok's another great example of a brand using AI to help Gen Z do what they love doing, which is to create. It's so not only does TikTok obviously use AI for the obvious one, the algorithm, um, AI is frequently used by Gen Zers themselves to participate in new trends, you know, tapping into this idea of co-creation. So this trend allows you to input a photo and then you get a whole bunch of yearbook photos back, which is exciting. And we saw celebrities getting involved. We had Kiki Palmer do it, Chance the Rapper, Snoop Dogg did one, which was amazing. Um, and it was just a really fun and creative use of AI. And it also taps into this idea of nostalgia, which we're going to come back to a little bit later in this presentation. Um, but yeah, this isn't the only example. We're seeing AI filters pop up left, right, and center. Um, people are using it to see what they'd look like at their wedding. They want to see what their future kids would look like. Um, so very popular, cool versus scary. I'm not 100% sure of that yet, but um, great example from TikTok. Finally, innovative experience. So the beauty industry is one that's really been a trailblazer in this space and its use of AI. So loads of beauty and cosmetic brands will allow you to do things like virtual try on. So we've got an example from Mac Cosmetics, art studio where you can go into a store and try on some of the products in real time, try before you buy. So there's no smudging lipsticks onto your hand anymore. Very, very um, efficient. Um, AI really feeds into ensuring inclusivity here, so we can adapt to things like different skin tones, different face shapes. Um, and this also taps into the idea of an experience, which we know Gen Z love when they go into stores, you know, being able to try out these products in real time. Um, and again, like I said, you get home and you don't have to check the product and realize it's completely the wrong shade and you can't return it. So very handy from Mac there as well. Um, and I believe Rick is going to talk a little bit more about Thank that concept you. of an experience. Experiences, travel, IRL, and the experience economy. This time last year, I stood up at the start of the event and spoke about how young people are beginning to emerge from a global pandemic. And over the past year, my goodness me, are they really getting out there? Now, Gen Z are gaining inspiration online for those real-life in-person experiences. And we've seen on TikTok a 410% increase in views on travel content. They're actively seeking out where can they go, what can they experience, and more importantly, what's the value of these experiences? Very high for Gen Z. We think Gen Z live online. Well, our report is saying very much otherwise, with 72% of Gen Z wanting to travel this year. But what I find really exciting is the fact that 43% want to travel solo, on their own, get out into the world and experience all that life has to offer on their own, which demonstrates so clearly this is an independent cohort of young people emerging into the world. Oops, looks like the click has stopped. Oh, goodness. Mm. There we go. The experience economy, here we are. 63% of our panelists, the Gen Z, said that the, the present is more important to them than cost. They value experiences way much more than their bank accounts. There we go. With 54% of our panelists would spend outside of their budget for a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. Yes, the cost of living crisis is prevalent, but they do have money to spend, and they will spend it if the experience is stand out enough. Will it enrich their lives enough? They're happy to go over budget. And 54% also want the experience to be value for money, of course. So young people are getting ready to get out in the world and spend on those rich experiences. My clicker. Is yours working? It's having a bit of an issue. Oh. There we go. And there how? We go. There we go. Here we are. 
10 o'clock on the first technical, so that's <laughs> fine. So how can we all be reaching Gen Z, which is why we're here? Well, first off, of course, let's be getting on social. Our Youth Trends 2024 report is showing that 82% of consumers trust social media to guide their purchasing decisions. A strong, strong, continually strong platform. Six in 10 Gen Zs are using smartphones to find out their experiences. So let's get that content into their phones and show them what the world has to offer. And an always on approach. Let's not wait for summer festivals to kick off our com campaigns. Let's be reaching them all year round with exciting, innovative content online. And let's have a quick look here at, um, at one of our examples. Today, I surprised my cousin with a trip to Rome thanks to Viator. I found this amazing deal on student means, so I had to go. She thought we were going to London, and this is when I gave her her boarding pass. Give me a boarding pass. Yeah. We're going to Rome. Turn the camera off now. You're not joking. You're not. <laughs> I haven't told my parents. You Anyway, we got to Gatwick like Airport and we boarded the plane and we're so excited, especially for the food and the tours thanks to Viator. As soon as we landed, we got to the apartment, explored the city and we did this amazing tour guide experience which we found on Viator. We tasted gelatos and we had tons of food. The tour guide even showed us the best pizza and pasta places and of course I had to pay for it all. Lovely, right. Nostalgia. Um, so I'm not trying to say that we can predict the future but in 2021 we covered this before. Um, and it's back again, but we're seeing new iterations of it. So Gen Z is shooting on film, vinyl records are at their highest level of sales since 1990. We're seeing trends like grandma core, poised to be one of the biggest aesthetic trends of 2024, book talk growing on TikTok. What does this mean? Well, before we get into it, let's do a little exercise. Um, I want everyone to have a quick think about what their comfort movie is. Um, and whilst you have a think, I'll ask you, Rick. I'd love to hear what yours is. Crikey. Um, my favourite comfort movie would be, I'm a bit nervous, Jurassic Park. Jurassic Park. Yeah. I've never actually seen it, so I don't know if I can give good commentary on it. I think mine would probably have to be Harry Potter, um, which probably doesn't help with the British stereotype, but I love it. Um, would anyone like to be brave and shout out theirs? Home Alone. Home hey. Alone. Nice. Anyone else? Step Brothers. Step Brothers. Interesting. Okay. Oh. Um, so, why have we done this? Well, nine times out of ten, when we think about comfort movies, it's going to be something from the past. Because when we feel troubled, we associate this with wanting to feel safe. When did we feel the most safe and the most protective from the doom and gloom of the world? In our childhood. So, we saw nostalgia explode during the pandemic. Um, it explains why so many of us texted our exes, why loads of shows and movies got reboots. We saw Gossip Girl come back, and just like that came back, Spider-Man. Companies beefed up their nostalgia marketing, and even in a post-pandemic world, we are still craving these feelings of comfort and safety. So we touched on it earlier, but these are really tough times that young people are living through. Um, Gen Z are anxious about the future because it feels uncertain, and that's why they're looking back. 87% have shared that they have these feelings of anxiety. And ironically, they're looking back by going on their technological devices. So the hashtag nostalgia currently has 354 million views on TikTok. How are, how are we seeing this manifest? In a couple of key ways. So, identity and fashion. 94% are interested in 90s and year 2000 fashion. It's translating into their spending habits. 43% want to shop with brands that they find comforting. And finally, I love this one, new hobbies, hobbies such as crocheting and arts and crafts. This is a very surprising statistic, but arts and crafts are now just as popular as clubbing and bar nights for Gen Z in the US in 2024. Crazy. How are brands getting involved? So there is a concept called nostalgia. So nostalgia combines a past with the present, and it allows brands to change their legacies and rework them with modern updates. And we're seeing this happen in real time from brands. One example is Abercrombie & Fitch. So 10 years ago, Abercrombie & Fitch had a couple of controversies, a couple of PR crises, and as a result, Gen Z fell out of love with them. Um, but they're back, they've changed their narrative, and they've switched it by holding the values that Gen Z holds close. Things like inclusivity, diversity, and sustainability, which are three words we probably wouldn't have associated with that brand 10 years ago. Um, it's a quote from one of our Gen Zers, it's like, suddenly Abercrombie became cool again. Um, and on that note, on the note of um, brand pivoting and PR crises and controversies, that takes me to our final trend, which I'm gonna hand back over Thanks, to Rick Alex. for. Uh, the council culture debate 
There's a, a fear, I imagine, amongst many marketeers and anybody in the industry that one wrong move and potentially your brand organization could be cancelled. And in our latest Youth Trends Report at Pion, we took this out to our audience to understand what does this mean to them? Do they feel they are a woke generation? What's their views on cancel culture? And actually, the results were really interesting. And here's a quote from one of our um, interview um, persons. Woke has been thrown around so much that it feels meaningless. This is a direct quote from one of our Gen Z participants. And from our report, 69% of Gen Z do not consider themselves woke, despite meeting the criteria for that definition. So across the report, they met the criteria, but when faced with the fact that, well, do you think you're woke? They said no. The, the, the concept itself now has negative connotations to this cohort of young people. So our 2024 data shows that 48% of young people from our Youth Trends Report do not consider themselves woke. 34%, surprisingly, don't care if a brand doesn't share their beliefs on social issues. They'll still purchase from them. And finally, almost half of Gen Z, so 46%, would consider uncancelling a brand if they took actions to rectify this issue. So 46% would uncancel a brand. Now, oops, there we go. The clicker stopped working. Got it, got it. So what, it, what does this mean for us here in the room, uncancelling? Well, a quote from the report, the digital is the political. Um, a really great example we want to pull from today is that brands can bounce back from a scandal, from being cancelled. And Starbucks is a really great example of this happening. There was an incident that was recorded around racism internally, and it went viral across all platforms with the hashtag um, boycott Starbucks trending across the globe. And their CEO took immediate action, and Starbucks stores were closed down for days. Internal training happened. They took action and proof they were committed to solving this issue, and Starbucks bounced back successfully. So will Gen Z forgive a brand? Yes, but let's put meaningful actions into place to rectify those problems. And Starbucks is a fantastic example of how things should be done. Now, the full Youth Trends Report is released in June, but you can pre-order your copy at the Pion stand over in the networking space um, for the full report when it's released. That's all from myself and Alex for this morning. But before we head into the next two days, I just want to ask and challenge you all to move out of your comfort zone, to attend a session that maybe you think might not be interesting for you today because you might learn something new for tomorrow, and talk to somebody that you've never met because you never know who you might meet here and what connections can be made. So have a fantastic two days ahead. And once again, a big thank you from everyone here at Pion and enjoy the event. Thank you.